Always Mine by Samadhi W. Chapter 13 It seemed like wherever Hermione went, a girl was giving her a disgusted or hateful look. Houses didn't matter. She turned to face her boyfriend in disgust. Have you slept with all the girls in the school? He tapped his chin and pretended to think. She punched him playfully. Draco winked. Not everyone gets to ride the dragon. Blaze doubled over with laughter and mused. Well, Granger, he has slept with a lot of them. Draco glared sternly at his friends. Thanks for the update, Blaze. Tall skinned man put up his stance in defense. Theo put his arm around Hermione's shoulders and pulled her close. Don't mind these bitches. He spat at the group of girls closest to him and they jumped back. He glanced over his shoulder at Draco and grinned. They're jealous because you nabbed the Prince of Sutherland, and all they got was his puny dick. No sooner did the words leave his mouth, the lanky blonde ran with Draco chasing right after him with his wand. Hermione laughed hard as Draco chased Theo down the corridor, cursing after him. Blaze came to stand by her side and smiled. He's happy with you. You're changing him for the better, Granger. Hermione softened her gaze and replied fondly. No, Blaze, this is who he is. He just realizes it now. They exchanged a look of deep understanding and hurried after Theo and Draco. Later that night, Draco sat in the southern common room, having a casual chat and drink with Theo and Blaze when Pansy and Astoria approached him. They looked quite frustrated and furious. The boys eyed them lazily and continued their conversation about Quidditch. Pansy crossed her arms over her bosom. Why are you fucking the mud, blonde? You know you promised to marry Astoria. Draco ignored her purposely, leaned forward and finished his drink slowly. These stupid girls had no idea who they were dealing with. He licked his lips, brought himself to his full height, and towered over the two girls. Intimidated, they took an involuntary step back. Let me make myself abundantly clear, and I'm not accustomed to repeating myself. He glanced in Pansy's direction. So take notes if you must. And then gave Astoria his full attention. Draco narrowed his eyes, leaned forward, and hissed. I will never marry you, nor will I have you in my life any more. He paused for effect and added, I love Granger. Astoria stood rooted to the spot. Blaze, Theo, Pansy, and everyone within earshot stared with their mouth hanging open. Love? Lost, yes, definitely. But love? Draco Malfoy didn't love or didn't until now. Draco bid his best friends good night, pushed past a flabbergasted Astoria Greengrass and exited the dungeon. Finally coming to his senses, Astoria watched his retreating figure closely, and a scheming smile split her face in half. She cocked her head to the side and thought, oh Well, we will have to see about that. At first, she had been convinced it was some fucked-up dare and Draco was simply being Draco and trying to mess with Granger, but she had been dead wrong. The idiot had fallen in love with a fucking mudblood. If his father found out about their budding romance, it would be an untimely death for Granger. Astoria had been sleeping with Draco since her sixth year, and she was determined to be his last. A hard determination grabbed her petite frame and she whispered into the darkness. I will have you, Draco Malfoy, and become the next Lady Malfoy. A mudblood bitch will never etch me out. It was a sunny day and Hermione took deep breath and clutched her books to her chest. A voice from the other side made her turn. Theo ran towards her, waving madly. Granger, hold up! Hermione raised a brow. Theo caught up with her, took her hand, and kissed it gratefully. He gushed. Thank you, Granger. You're welcome? She replied, rather confused by what was happening. Theo let her go and cleared his throat. Let me explain. It's a sad story about a handsome boy. That's me, by the way, and Draco. Hermione stifled a laugh and asked, And your point being... He motioned for her to be silent and wiped away a fake tear. 
since Draco has been with you, girls notice me and look at me. It's so beautiful. He pulled out a parchment with lipstick, marks, and an enchanted heart. Hermione eyed it in interest and grinned. Theo straightened and declared proudly, All Draco does is stare at you. He's not interested in anyone anymore. You have achieved the impossible, Hermione. Hermione blushed and shoved the lanky blonde Slytherins playfully. He glanced over her head, saw demeanor changed, and he became hostile. Theo pointed towards Astoria as she approached them and hissed. Don't look now, but here comes trouble. Hermione regarded the Slytherin girl curiously and muttered, Oh, I wonder what she wants. Theo rolled his eyes and said sarcastically, Aren't ye supposed to be the smartest witch of our time or something? Astoria dusted her robes and greeted them cheerfully. Theodore, Hermione, isn't it a marvellous day? Theo didn't bother to hide his contempt. It was until ye fucking showed up. Hermione nudged him and politely asked, What can we do for you, Astoria? The Slytherin girl looked at Theo in disgust and replied sweetly, uh, I wanted to have a word with you, if you have the time, of course. Theo looked at the two girls, bowed, and took off to find Draco. Asoya frowned at Theo's retreating figure. I always found him so annoying. Hermione narrowed her eyes and didn't mince her words. Count to the chase, Astoria. What do you want? Astoria brushed her hair back and smiled. Very well. I want you to stop seeing Draco. Hermione cocked her hat to his side and asked coolly, And why should I do that? Astoria continued to smile. It's quite simple. We're engaged and I will marry him when we are twenty. Hermione rolled her eyes. Is this one of those pure blood things? She leaned forward and smirked. Sure, it sounds like it, but I'll tell you what. If Draco wants to marry you, then I won't stand in the way. The Southern girl laughed maniacally. <laughs> you naive little mudblood, do you think you can honor the house of Malfoy? She added viciously. Do you think Draco will ever take you before his parents? You are forbidden fantasy for a man who has everything. Without mercy, she hissed. You're just a unicorn he craves. Don't flatter yourself into thinking he's in love with you. Astoria leaned in and spat. My advice, get out while you still can. Hermione smiled sweetly. Believe what you like, but you have no idea what he wants or who he is. She turned her back defiantly on the fuming Slytherin girl and walked away before the tears fell down her cheek. A few months later, Hermione packed a few essentials into a bag and Draco leaned against the doorway watching her. They had quite literally spent every minute together for the past five months and Ginny complained a girl's night was way overdue. Hermione agreed to it at once and honestly she did miss the company of the girl. She pulled us up close and turned to catch the smirking Slytherin walked towards her. Bending over, he grabbed her and kissed her heart. She whimpered and her arms went around his neck. Are you going out with the boys? She asked, catching her breathing and playfully shoving him away. Draco lazily nodded. Yeah, I'm heading to the dungeons after you leave. Theo's been worse than a girl moaning about how we need to bond. He grinned and added, He needs to shag. Hermione rolled her eyes. Shagging is not the answer to everything. It was his turn to roll his eyes. He knew nothing about horny young adults and frustration. Catching her off guard, he cornered her, enticingly moving his fingers up her skirt and rested his fingers on her most sensitive area. Letting out a gasp, her heart on him tightened. The breath ghosted at the skin of her ear. It might not be the answer to everything, but it is gratifying. Draco withdrew his fingers and Hermione pouted in disappointment. The infamous Malfoy Manor stood against a picturesque backdrop. The beautifully maintained gardens and sculptures from the Renaissance reeked of misdeeds. It was an imposing sight, but within the walls, life shifted into the darkness and hid its ugly face from the rest. 
It was a dark and miserable place, made so by Lucius Malfoy himself. Word had already reached him of his son's unforgivable behavior. Lucius had at first laughed at the notion and pushed it aside, because he refused to believe that Draco would soil himself with the association of a mudblood and bring shame to his house and family. He had thought his son was having some fun with the filthy mudblood, using her until a better prospect appeared on the horizon. But love? No. His son would use her, discard her, and leave her wanting. But love? Jack would never fall in love with such a disgusting creature. Lucius stalked around the manor angrily, crushed a letter in his hand, and it fell to the ground in pieces. The house elves took the burn frustration. It was time to have a word with his only child. Hermione walked through the portrait, smiling to herself. She casually flung the bag over her shoulder and noticed Ron and Levin on the couch. They had a heated argument. Ron locked eyes with her and forced a weak smile. His face looked drawn and sad. He had desperately tried to speak for her for months, but she purposely ignored him. They needed time to heal and move past his ugliness. Hopefully, they could salvage their friendship at some point. Ginny squealed when she saw Hermione. Luna was already there, lazily drinking pumpkin juice and lying on the couch. They lounged around in their pyjamas, eating some of the finest chocolates from Honeydukes and gossiping. Ginny popped the last piece of chocolate in her mouth and turned on Hermione. She cleared her throat and asked, So, Miss Hadgirl, is Malfoy really that good in bed, or is it a bunch of shite? Hermione felt the heat rise, and her cheeks turned crimson. She threw a fluffy pillow at the brazen rat head and cried, What the hell? Jenny shrugged, leaned forward, and grinned. Come on. The girls are always on about how good he is. Tell us. Luna listened intently and added thoughtfully, Draco does have the physique for it. With a twinkle in her eye and a mischievous grin, Hermione confided proudly, If you must know, he's not just good, he's bloody fucking good. Ginny covered her mouth and screamed, Dear Merlin! Next, Luna filled them in on her date with Theo. The quirky blonde's eyes sparkled as she spoke about the funny Slytherin. It seemed like they had a perfect time, and even though Hermione never pictured Theo as the romantic son, he had gone all the way to impress Luna. Hermione was ecstatic. She liked Theo, and it made quite an impact on Luna. Later into the night, Harry joined them, sitting on the carpet, his arms protectively around Ginny. Harry had been keeping a sharp eye on Hermione and Malfoy together. He still had doubts about the duo, but grudgingly he had to admit that Malfoy genuinely cared about Hermione. He just hoped his best friend wouldn't get hurt in the long run. Draco drained his bottle of fire whiskey. The place roared with laughter after Theo told him about his date with Luna. Theo looked at them in disappointment. He had hoped his friends would have been more supportive. The lanky Slytherin glared at his best friend until Blaze controlled himself. He scowled. Oi, get! I like Luna a lot. Blaze held on to his side. Okay, Theo. I just never packed you as a romantic sod. Theo protested. Yeah, well, neither is Draco. I don't see you fucking laughing at him. Draco smirked. Well, mate, I'm not you. It was getting late, and he wanted to get some sleep. Returning to an empty dorm room was about as appealing as kissing a blast and a screwed. He debated internally whether to swing by and give his little witch a goodnight kiss. Caught up in his thought, he was momentarily distracted as Astoria passed by in a skimpy white nightdress and pretty much nothing else. Blaze whistled in appreciation. Draco shook his head. He knew the little display was for his benefit. He stood up and yawned pointedly. Okay, boys. I'm tired as fuck. Blaze and Theo waved him off. They were tired themselves. Theo dozed on the couch with his mouth open. When Draco tried to exit the dungeon, he found his path blocked by Astoria. He took a step back and eyed her with boredom. Leaving so soon, darling. She drawled confidently and tried to trail her fingers across his chest. He took another step back, sized her up and lied convincingly. 
Yes, Hermione is waiting for me. Anything to get rid of the half-naked girl in front of him. The Slytherin girl was not pleased with being dismissed so easily. Her eyes menacingly narrowed. Ye, yeah, and your little mudlot won't last. My parents and yours will see to that. Draco grabbed Astoria and pulled her towards him. She felt her pulse quicken as he leaned in close, his lips almost touching her ear. He snarled. Don't you dare fucking threaten me, Astoria. You can never take a place. He added angrily. Do you told me about your little talk with Hermione? Draco narrowed his eyes and sneered. If you hurt her, you will answer directly to me. He almost spat the last words at her, pushed her aside and climbed out of the portrait. Astoria rubbed her wrist, her mouth viciously curved. We will see, Draco Malfoy. To be continued. Thank you for listening to this chapter of Always Mine by Samadhi W. If you'd like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on YouTube, Spotify, or AO3.